Hello, my name is Jose Barriga and uh, to the next video in the series of converting the Nissan sensor to an electric vehicle. Uh, it's not long ago that I did the previous video and I am doing a new one just to focus on the capacitors. When I mentioned about the capacitors that I use in the car, I got a lot, a lot of questions. So I'm going to talk about capacitors. Um, I'm just going to show you very quickly the uh, cosmetic improvements that I've done to the car. I um, changed the headlamps. Uh, they're new now. Uh, the old ones were foggy because they were painted black and I had to remove the paint and it didn't clean completely very well. So I just bought the, uh, the uh, new headlamps. I also replaced these little guys here. These were a little damaged in the previous, the, you know, the old ones. These are still not new, but they're in much better shape. And finally, um, I bought another reverse lamp assembly. When they painted the car, they painted the uh, the, 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 the reverse light. This is supposed to be clear, and so I replaced it with this. As a coincidence, there is a model of Sentra that is the exact same sh uh, color of the, the car that I painted. That was a coincidence. I didn't really plan for it. It just happened to be the same color. I was lucky there. I didn't have to repaint it. And it just, uh, it, it just happens to be the same color. Anyway, let's talk about uh, capacitors. So what kind of uh, capacitors are these? These are Maxell. 2.5 volts, 2600 uh, farads capacitors, and it was not really my idea to use capacitors instead of the uh, battery, instead of the car battery. I saw this on in YouTube, and if you search for things like replace your car battery with capacitors or using capacitors as the, as the car battery, you will find all these videos that I saw. Um, it's interesting because um, it, it, it approaches the idea that using capacitors reduces your uh, maintenance a lot. In a regular car, I'm not sure I would use capacitors because they have much less uh, energy density than a regular battery. And you may run out of energy in the capacitor and then you won't be able to start your car. I would not recommend to use capacitors in a car if you have some other way to charge them besides the alternator, uh, like a small solar panel for example. Um, in the case of an electric car it's ideal to use capacitors because you have the big battery bank and the DC to DC converter. So these capacitors are being charged all the time and then there's uh, very little risk to run, uh, running out of power in your capacitor bank to charge to, to, to power your, your accessories. Let me take a quick uh, let me show you a quick look of these capacitors. Uh, I bought these capacitors on eBay. Uh, it's a little difficult to see because they're enclosed in plastic, but basically I bought these capacitors in uh, eBay for I bought six of them for $120 so roughly they were about $20 each shipping included now what are the advantages of using capacitors well capacitors last forever they last about a hundred thousand charge discharge cycles so they last forever they are very light compared to a battery, which in a, an electric car weight is always a concern. They can be discharged at 0%, while if you do that with a battery, the batteries will get damaged. So, but this can get discharged to 0% with no problem. Um, they are um, light, no maintenance. Uh, what is What else? Uh, and they have no chemical reaction inside to store the electricity. It is a physical media. The way that the capacitors work is really a uh, positive and a negative plates separated by uh, a non-conductive material in the middle. Many times this material is oil. And what they're trying to do is just 
feed positive and negative uh, charges in both plates, and that they, they cannot really communicate to each other in the in the uh, because of the media separating them, separating them, which means they are um, since there is no chemical reaction inside, they are very fast to charge. You can charge a capacitor really really fast without hurting it. Uh, the only way that is mostly hurt a capacitor is you if you overcharge it when and, and in that case it may smoke or it may even explode so the, the overcharging them is a big no for capacitors but other than that you can fast charging and fast discharging really fast and they won't get damaged um, so um, Okay, so here's a very interesting idea for you to think about it. I don't have time and I don't have money to try this. Uh, from what I've read, this doesn't really work very well. But I've heard about three persons so far that they have been trying to put enough of these capacitors in series. These are in series, by the way, 2.5 volts each one, and they're in series, so I got 15 volts. Uh, a 15 volt system but you can connect them in parallel or you can connect them in series or you can do whatever you want pretty much like batteries and increase the amperage or increase the voltage depending on how you're connecting them but um, I've heard about persons trying to build a bank of these capacitors big enough to put in parallel with the with the batteries of an electric car what's the idea when you are standing or stopped completely and you accelerate the uh, and you accelerate the batteries provide a lot of amperage to the motor and that causes the voltage to sag down a lot so some persons think that by putting uh, capacitors bank in parallel with the batteries they will help the batteries provide twice as much uh, amperage to the motor and then the sagging would not occur that much so it's a way to get more power in the acceleration without uh, sucking that much power from the batteries uh, the experience that I've seen uh, on persons who have tried this is that since the batteries sag so much in the acceleration at least lead acid batteries all the power is taken first from the capacitors and then from the batteries and then it doesn't really work as it should because they're not really working in parallel the capacitors are first discharged in series or first and then the batteries and if you search in YouTube for a guy who, can, who used this in a Fiero uh, search for a Fiero and then capacitors in an electric vehicle uh, he improves on a performance for maybe 5% in his amperage user used so I don't really think it works that well if you use it in the make battery pack um, I've heard that they're using them in buses but when you use them in buses or, or when they use them in buses they're ideal because they are in a fixed route and they can charge these capacitors really fast in each stop of the bus so they charge them really fast and even though they don't have the same energy density of the batteries and they're good just for five or six miles they're enough to reach the next bus stop where they're charged again so using capacitors is a very cheap way to build electric buses for example they can be recharged really often in, in the stops and they just need to be able to push the bus for four or five miles uh, and the next stop is likely before those miles so um, in, in cars, I'm not sure it's, it's such a good idea, especially in cars with no fixed route. Um, some other thing that I've heard uh, as, an, as an interesting idea is that they are trying to, uh, since capacitors, if I replace my battery bank with capacitors, I'll probably only get enough power to drive five miles because of the energy density. I've heard of a project that is trying to make the whole uh, body of a car a big capacitor like this could be for example the positive and then a second layer right next to it 
uh, for the negative. So the whole car, they're trying to make the whole car capacitor, which can lo uh, uh, store energy. Uh, I don't particularly think that that's a good idea because uh, I don't think it's a good idea to have your car like charged positive and high voltage. I think it's dangerous, and I don't think that's making any progress. But that's that's another idea that that they're having for electric cars. Anyway, um, finally, I just want to mention that this is very good for electric cars because space is always very valuable on electric cars, and this can be connected in any position. Like it can be connected in line, they can be connected in series of two. So. Uh, in the future, I probably think I can use this space for something else and connect these guys under the car or something in line. And since they are maintenance free, I can put them really anywhere in the car, saving uh, saving space in the, in the motor compartment. Um, now, in my car, these are really only being used for peaks. Uh, most of the energy that is used by the wipers, the uh, lights and everything else is provided by the DC to DC. Uh, converter. These are really being used for peaks when I turn on the power steering, when I turn off the lights, uh, things that ca cause sudden peaks uh, and then the power is shared with the capacitors. But other than that, everything is really maintained by the DC to DC charger. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to use uh, heavily several systems in the car and I'm going to show you the voltage in the uh, the voltage in the uh, system is 14.0 when I started now it's uh, it settles to 13.6 or C or so when I turn on the car but let me turn different things for example wipers for example lights uh, blinkers uh, power steering and you see this this barely goes to 13 13.2 point, 13 13.1 13 so there is uh, the capacitors can keep up with the, with the high demand the the capacitors are really helping the DC to DC charging to um, just with the peaks so they work really really well in electric cars uh, one final thought uh, my power steering is always, when it starts kind of jerky, it starts at full power. So when I'm driving and the power steering is suddenly turned on, it sometimes a little jerky because it starts full power. Uh, I'm going to try to install a capacitor, a capacitor always also in parallel with the power steering, just so to make it, when the capacitor is charging, it should absorb some of the power going to the power steering pump and then I should get a mar much more uh, smooth uh, pressure when the pump turns on. So I should get a, a little less jerky start. Um, I think that's it, that's what I have for now. Thank you for watching.